morning, my dear brothers and sisters. Let us now together begin our Eucharistic celebration in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. I welcome you all on this Sunday that we celebrate the solemnity of the most sacred heart of Jesus. 
a feast or solemnity that dates back to the year 1673 when Mary Mar St. Mary Margaret Alacoque had visions, 1673 to 1675, and then in 1670, August, St. Jean Eudes, having prepared some prayers, enabled this feast to be celebrated officially in a place called Rene for the first time. However, in the year 1856, Pope Pius IX made it a feast to be celebrated into the whole church, into a universal celebration. Today, we also celebrate the Father's Day. Here, represented by myself, is Monique here. I think George is also a father. Fred is a father. John Schumer is a father. So we pray for ourselves and all the fathers who are watching us from everywhere that good Lord shall bless us with the three virtues of being a father, a protector, a provider, and a procreator. May the heart of Jesus that is sacred enable us to be in conformity with the will of God at all times. May the love for our families be stronger than our selfish desires. May our love for the service of God and mankind be greater than our own literal divisions that destroy our hearts. So let us now, as we also pray for this country to overcome this COVID-19 pandemic, as we offer the intentions of many parishioners who have asked us to remember them in these Eucharistic celebrations, the good Lord shall grant them sources of livelihood as we pray also for many people who are suffering because of flood. Let us now acknowledge our sinfulness and failure that it may be worthy to celebrate his great and sacred mysteries worthily. I confess to Almighty God and to my brothers and sisters that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me, the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting.
let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that we will glory in the heart of your beloved Son and recall the wonders of his love for us, may be made worthy to receive an overflowing measure of grace from that fount of heavenly gifts through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses spoke to the people, saying, You are a people holy to the Lord your God. The Lord your God has chosen you to be a people for his own possession. How to appall the peoples that are on the face of the earth. It was not because you are more in number than any other people that the Lord set his love upon you and choose you. For you are the fewest of all peoples, but it is because the Lord loves you and is keeping the whole which is so to your fathers and redeemed you from the house of bondage, from the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Know therefore that the Lord your God is God, the faithful God who gives covenant and merciful love, with those who love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations, and repays to their face those who hate him by destroying them. He will not be struck with him who hates him. He will repay him to his face. You shall therefore be careful to do the commandment and the statutes and the ordinances which I command you this day. The word of the Lord. The mercy of the Lord is everlasting upon those who hold him in fear. Bless the Lord, all my soul. 
song. I never forget all his benefits. The mercy of the Lord is everlasting. Oh, and compassion. The mercy of the Lord is a valency upon those who haunt The Lord and just in tears gives more justice to children of reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and he who loves is born of God and knows God. He who does not love does not know God, for God is love. In this the love of God was made manifest among us, that God sent his only begotten Son into the world so that we might live through him. In this is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the expiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No man has ever seen God. If we love one another, God abides in us, and his love is perfected in us. By this we know that we abide in him and he in us, because he has given us of his own spirit. And we have seen and testify that the Father has sent his Son as the Savior of the world. Whoever confesses that Jesus is the Son of God, God abides in him and he in God. So we know and believe the love God has, has for us. God is love, and he who abides in love abides in God, and God abides in him. The Word of the Lord.
Take my yoke upon you, says the Lord, and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart. From the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Matthew chapter 11, verse 25 to 30. At that time, Jesus declared, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and understanding and revealed them to infants. Yes, Father. For such was your gracious will. All things have been delivered to me by my Father. And no one knows the Son except the Father. And no one knows the Father except the Son. And anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you'll find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, my burden is light. The Gospel of the Lord. During the introduction, I forgot to recognize Franco as one of the fathers. He also praying for you. I also repeat, I'm also a father. Thank you so many of you who have wished me a happy Father's Day. For those who haven't, my MPS number remains the same, and you still have more hours in the day to do so. Fathers are invited to be providers. Fathers are invited to be protectors. And fathers are called to be procreators. Not just in biological sense, but in values, moral values, social norms. If fathers do not stand up for their families and for this society, we shall be doomed. If fathers do not take responsibility for their actions, if fathers have to be forced by courts of law to take care of their children, if fathers can abandon their children, then as a society, we cannot be able to make progress. If you are a father out there, and even though you could have been abandoned by your father like myself, you must rise up and defend your family. And a family is an institution, and you are the head of that institution. You must take responsibility. And thank God today we are celebrating the solemnity of the sacred heart of Jesus. Because basically, what we are celebrating today is love of God the Father, I found this expression in Jesus, our Lord and Savior, dying on the cross to liberate us from our own sinfulness. Fathers, kindly rise up. Interrogate your hearts. Is your heart full of love? Is it full of concern for your families? Or is it full of male chauvinism? Is it full of the tendency to dominate, to intimidate, are you open to divergent opinions? Do you treat your wife as somebody's daughter, somebody's niece, and somebody's daughter, or she has a relationship with someone else? The levels of suicide and homicide we are experiencing in families nowadays should remind the fathers this day is a day to rise up. We celebrate the sacred heart of Jesus' solemnity. A bit of historical background. In 1673 to 1675, St. Mary Margaret Alacoque experienced visions 
And during these visions, he got 12 promises from Jesus that those who observe this solemnity will experience. There are 12 of them. You can Google them up. I won't go through them because of time. Then in the year 1670, a priest called Saint Jean had composed some prayers that would enable the liturgy of Sacred Heart to be celebrated. And in August 1670, it was celebrated at a place called René for the first time. René is in France. In 1856, Pope Pius IX declared that this is going to be a universal celebration. And so that's why as a universal church, we are celebrating it. If you are keen enough, this was last Friday. It is celebrated 19 days after Pentecost, but we've been guided by our shepherd to celebrate the solemnity today as a church, of course, through the pastoral office. So what are we celebrating today? We are celebrating a sacred heart. Now, let's start from the known to unknown. When you hear of a heart, what comes into your mind? A heart, one, is an organ that pumps blood. Do you know where your heart is? I'm told it's normally on the left. If your heart has been broken, you must know where it is because when a heart is broken, it's painful. A heart is an organ that should be healthy, pumps blood. If a heart fails, you die. A heart is also a symbol of love, human love. You see it on Valentine's Day and other days, heart is a symbol of love. At this point, it doesn't really matter what kind of love. It could be agape, eros, could be filial love. But what we are celebrating today is not an organ that pumps blood, not a symbol of human love. The word heart from the Jewish lab, the word lab in Jewish denotes just more than a biological organ. It stands for the innermost part of a person. It refers to will, it refers to mind. It refers to consciousness, emotions, and understanding. It refers to a person's moral character and determination. So when we talk about sacred heart of Jesus, we are referring not to his biological heart, which he had because he was human, but his general disposition, his general character that informed his earthly ministry that took him all the way to the cross, that led him to the glory sitting on the right hand side of God the Father. It is generally his character. We celebrate his entire character. And when we celebrate this then, we are invited to live our lives in conformity with his general character. We are invited to interrogate our hearts and find out what fills your heart. You've heard sometimes of people being described as uko narohombaya. Doesn't mean you have a bad heart. Maybe your heart is the healthiest among us. But that means you are full of character that destroys people rather than build you up. Yesu hakuwa narohombaya. He had a good heart for all of us. And that was not just then, because his power to save continues to be effective up to this day. We celebrate his infinite, sacrificial, and unconditional love. And we are called to transform our lifestyle to be of such nature. When I look at you, I do not see your tribe. I don't see your social status. I see a brother. I see a sister. Because through the death of Christ, we are born through baptism now into children of God. We become sons and daughters of the Most High. And we purify our love from errors, which is love of physical attraction, from failure, which is love for brothers and sisters and comrades, to agape love. And agape love is unconditional, it is sacrificial, it is action-oriented, it is transformational. It is not transactional. It does not gain, seek its own gain. It's difficult kind of love. 
but it's the most fulfilling type of love. So as we celebrate this day today, our readings guide us to three things that will enable us to make the most out of this celebration. Benefiting from this infinite, immense love of Christ. The first reading from the book of Deuteronomy chapter 7 draws our attention to the reality of our own identity. We normally say, if you do not know where you have come from, if you lose what they call historical consciousness, then it is very difficult to make progress in life. And that is what Moses is doing in the first reading. An invitation to the Jewish people to recognize their identity, who they are, where they have come from. And he tells them, remember you have been slaves for over 400 years. And God's intervention in your situation was not because you had a numerical advantage, not because you are many in number, it is because of three things. He loved you, he was keeping his promises, he promised to your fathers, and three, he wanted to confirm his identity that he is God, one and true God, as opposed to other fake gods that were being worshipped by the communities that surrounded them. And this applies to us now as it did in the Jewish people then. We are faced with a crisis of COVID-19. Families are struggling financially. And even as I speak, you know that money has decided to keep a social distance from us. We are struggling as a country and as families. We have been forced to sanitize our relationship. We have been literally thrown to a deep end, as it were, to spend time with our children. Historical consciousness must remind us there are many things we have faced in the past and maybe did not rise up to the occasion, but the first reading must remind us that this sacred heart of Jesus and his great love, just like it was then with the Jewish people, it applies to us today. We must recognize that we are not defined by our current situation. We are not defined by our abundance or scarcity. We are defined by that identity of being chosen people, children of God. And even in our various captivities, God continues and so desires to set us free. He therefore invites us to take up this new definition that Moses gives in Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 6. For you are a people holy to the Lord your God. God has chosen you from all the peoples on the face of the earth to be people specially his own. From the readings we read, the translation was to be his possession. We do not belong to any other institution. We don't belong to our property. We belong to God. And just like he intervened during that time of the Israelites and gave them a new land, we must have faith and trust in God that even the situation we are facing as families and as a country, he is going to intervene for us. All we need is to, like we are told in that reading, to be obedient to his command and statutes and to take God seriously for once. And like I have said, not to seek validation and interventions from other places, but offer ourselves and our situations, including the current one of COVID-19, to God. The second thing that the second heart of Jesus draws our attention to, if we make an effort to live our life in conformity to its character, is that then we also acknowledge the real reality of life, that we struggle, our daily struggles, and this is made so clear in the gospel. Jesus makes a prayer in the gospel and he says, I thank you, Father, for I give praise to you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, for although you have hidden these things from the wise and the learned, you have revealed them to the childlike. The translation we read said infants. Infants and childlike means the same thing. So you must recognize the reality of human life that even though God continues to reveal himself in our own lives on a daily basis, even though God has revealed himself in the past, we sometimes have failed to experience his living presence 
Why? Because we have refused to develop a childlike attitude. And childlike attitude implies what? Implies humility. A childlike attitude. And not this is not childish. There's a very big difference between being childish and being childlike. I don't want to give examples that people may, fight, may feel attacked. But if you are childish, you know. If you have refused to talk to someone now because of something that happened in the past or recently, you cannot talk or say hi to that person. That is not being childlike, it's being childish. Because you forget that that person was in her, his mother's womb for nine months. And after two years of life, they did not talk coherently to anybody. And they, didn't, they, they never died. They didn't die. So you try to style up, stop being childish, and open up to people and relationships. Childlike means the four things I've mentioned. Humility, this innocence. Children do not tell lies. Children, of course, maybe uh, modern children may tell lies a little bit. But they are also, so they are humble, they are innocent, they trust. And the fourth character of a child is they are docile. They are open to learn. Do you have a childlike attitude? Because God continues, just like Jesus confirms in the gospel, God continues to reveal himself to us in many situations and circumstances of life. Not necessarily with things that we want to hear or things we want to see. Sometimes he wakes us up from a slumber to let us know that he is the only and true living God. What happens when we fail to develop that childlike attitude? What happens is Jesus confirms we labor. Jesus invites us to come to him, those who are laboring and heavily laden. You labor. You work so hard because you are seeking fulfillment from material things, not from God himself. You become heavily laden. You do not experience the full satisfaction of being human. Because for you, money and material things stop becoming means to an end and they become ends in themselves. Money cannot be an end in itself. We do not work for money. Money is a means towards other things and material things as well. And in Psalm, Psalm 16 verse 4, when we do so, we are reminded those who choose other gods increase their sorrows. Because if you do not develop a childlike attitude and trust in God, you start worshipping other small gods. And the psalmist tells us in 16.4, those who choose other gods increase their sorrows. A man called Rabbi Zacharias notes that only God answers the four questions of every human being. Only God. And those questions are our origin, our meaning, our morality, and our destiny. Ravi Zacharias was one of the greatest Christian apologet apologetics who ever lived. I think he died the other day. Saint Augustine declares, "You have made for us, for you have made us for yourself, Lord, and our hearts are restless until they find rest in you, our God." So our hearts can only find rest in God. And quoting one of our parishioners in his reflection. Gentleman called Cyprian, he notes in his reflection about his 30 years of life, says there's a big emptiness that devours those who are not spiritually grounded and rooted. So you see the importance of developing a childlike attitude. You overcome that sense of emptiness and you enjoy life because you know it has a source and that source is God and you live life in connection with him. When you do that then you develop the character of Christ. And when you do that, then finally, what do we do? Because we know our struggle as human beings, we respond to Jesus' invitation to seek rest in him. As human beings, we are struggling with many things. And our souls are seeking for that rest. And that rest will not be found in our social structures. They will not be found in material things. They will not provide that much needed rest. Only Jesus in his sacred nature, his sacred heart, can provide that much needed rest. Because Jesus does not dispute, by the way, that there are challenges that arise, but he helps us to confront those challenges. And in the gospel he says, 
my yoke. Those who come from eastern Kenya and parts of central Kenya would know what a yoke is, what we call a plow. A yoke is normally pulled by two bulls or mules. So Jesus is telling you, I know your life has difficulties and challenges. I know you are pulling a yoke. But I'm not telling you I'm going to lift the yoke. I am going to be on one side and you are going to be on another side and we are going to pull the yoke together. My yoke is easy and light. Our yoke as a country, as families, shall become manageable only if it's pulled together with Jesus. Otherwise, we shall remain restless, we shall remain disturbed, we shall remain fighting as families unless we recognize that. And after doing that, what is our ultimate goal? Second reading draws our attention to that. First out of St. John, chapter 4. That we must build communities of love where people and their dignity are recognized. Communities of love, genuine love, the love that Christ offered to us on the cross. St. John in the second reading offers a very logical explanation why we should love. And he says we should love because love is of God. So love belongs to God. Love, true love is not human. True love is divine. We are born of God through baptism. We are born of God. We are therefore children of God. When you are born, you take up the character of your father, the culture of your father, the traditions of your father. You cannot claim to be a child of God and yet do not love because God is love. We are born of God and God is love. So if you have not genuine love in you, you are following a different culture. You have a different lifestyle. Our communities become self-destructive because God is love. And God our Father is indeed love. And the second reading tells us God did not just say he loves us. He manifested this love by sending his only son to us on the cross and died to, salve, to save us from our own sins. So, greatest sign of love is our struggle and our fight against our sins. Because one of the things that sin does, sin destroys our ability to love genuinely because we become selfish, we become greedy. And finally, you know the tragedy of human life. And even though we have succeeded, we have advanced technologically, we have failed terribly in maintaining this kind of love. The quality of our relationship has declined terribly and greatly. And therefore, we pray to Jesus our Lord this morning that our heart shall be like his. We shall be able to recognize our identity as children of God and live as such. That we are going to recognize our struggles and offer them to the Lord. And we are going to make it an effort to build families, communities of genuine love, especially to our fathers out there. The Lord be with you. Rise up now and profess our faith. I believe in one God, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the faithful.
Sweet Jesus, your hearts beat for the broken hearted and you know their pain. You experienced loss when your friend Lazarus died and betrayal when your friends abandoned and rejected you in your darkest hours. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray that you will please give us the wisdom and spiritual fortitude to teach with love and trust in your tender mercies and that you will give the humility and strength to seek recovery through the saving grace of your sacred heart. We pray to the Lord. Lord, graciously hear us. Lord, you deserve all honor and praise because your love is perfect and your heart is supreme. Our hearts are filled to overflowing with gratitude for the many blessings and graces you have bestowed upon us and those whom we love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, graciously hear us. Lord, our hearts are filled with concern for those who are addicted. You know and see the disorder and chaos that the addiction is causing, and your heart grieves over the distortion of personality and danger to the soul that results when someone is in the thrones of addiction. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray that all our deceased relatives and friends may feast on the bread of life forever as God's heavenly table. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, graciously hear us. Almighty God and Father, we thank you for the gift of all the fathers. We pray that you may give them the strength, the courage, and that strong desire to seek you, to seek to know you, and therefore emulate St. Joseph a wonderful father who provided and who protected his family. We recognize the many challenges that they are going through. We offer them to you, dear Lord, especially those who have, do not have the capacity, who have lost the ability to be able to provide livelihoods for their families. Dear Lord, see through their pain, renew them in their ability, and make them experience your love and goodness. May they find consolation and strength and support from Jesus, he who has the sacred heart. And this we pray to the Lord. Lord Dear Lord, we also offer to you the many intentions of our parishioners who would so much wish to be in fellowship with us here in the church today. They are not able to do so. You know, the strong desire in their heart to live their lives in conformity with your heart that is sacred. To develop families and institutions that are full of love and where yokes are shared with you. We pray for them, dear Lord. Meet each and every one of them at the various point of their needs and renew in them your fatherly care and divine providence. For this we pray to the Lord. Now in the silence of your hearts, I invite you to offer your prayers and petitions to God. Now in faith and trust, childlike trust, we offer all these prayers to Christ our Lord through our mother as we pray, Hail Mary, for grace the Lord is with you. Blessed are you amongst women and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and the hour of our death. Amen. And we offer all these prayers through Christ our Lord.
now, my dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice in yours would be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Let us pray. Look, O oh Lord, we pray on the surpassing charity in the heart of your beloved Son, that what we offer may be a gift acceptable to you, and an expiation to our offenses, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Let us do right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, who raised up high on the cross, he gave himself up for us with wonderful love and poured out blood and water from his pierced side, the wellspring of the church sacrament, so that one over to the open heart of the Saviour, all might draw water joyfully from the springs of salvation. So with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. We give you praise, Father most holy, for you are great and you have fashioned all your works in wisdom and in love. You formed man in your own image and entrusted the whole world to his care, so that in serving you alone, the Creator, he might have dominion over all the creatures. And when through disobedience he had lost your friendship, you did not abandon him to the domain of death, for you came in mercy to the aid of all that those who seek you might find you. Time and again you offered them covenants and through the prophets taught them to look forward to salvation. And you so loved the world, Father most holy, that in the fullness of time you sent your only begotten Son to be our Savior, made incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He shared our human nature in all things but sin. To the poor he proclaimed the good news of salvation to prison us freedom, the sorrowful of heart joy. To accomplish your plan, he gave himself up to death, and rising from the dead, he destroyed death and restored life. That we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose again for us, he sent the Holy Spirit from you, Father, as the first fruit for those who believe, so that bringing to perfection his work in the world, he might sanctify the creation to the full. 
Therefore, O Lord, may this same Holy Spirit graciously sanctify these offerings that they may become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ for the celebration of this great mystery which he himself left us as an eternal covenant. For the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, Father most holy, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. And while they were at supper, he took bread, blessed, and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, taking the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine, he gave thanks and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. the mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we now celebrate the memorial of our redemption, we remember Christ's death and his descent to the realm of the dead. We proclaim his resurrection and his ascension to your right hand. And as we await his coming in glory, we offer you his body and blood, a sacrifice acceptable to you, which brings salvation to the whole world. Look, O Lord, upon the sacrifice which you yourself have provided for your church and grant in your loving kindness to all who partake of this one bread and one chalice that gathered into one body by the Holy Spirit, they may truly become a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your glory. Therefore, Lord, remember now all for whom we offer this sacrifice, especially your servant Francis, our Pope, Jen Kanunjue, our Archbishop, and the whole order of bishops, all the clergy, those who take part in this offering, those gathered here before you, your entire people, and all who seek you with a sincere heart. Remember also those who have died in the peace of your Christ, and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. To all of us, your children, grant, O merciful Father, they may enter into heavenly inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, St. Joseph, her most chaste spouse, with their blessed apostles and saints in your kingdom, the whole of creation, freed from the corruption of sin and death, may we glorify you through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, the mighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, our glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. The Savior's command, informed by his divine teachings, we now dare to say, Our Father, Amen. Lord be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Thus this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The power of glory are yours, 
now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you say to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. Live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace with a proper gesture. My dear brothers and sisters, behold now, our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say a word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, keep us safe for life everlasting.
Thus says the Lord, let whoever is thirsty come to me and drink. Streams of living water will flow from within one who believes in me. Let us pray. May this sacrament of charity, O Lord, make us fervent with the fire of holy love that drawn always to your Son, we may learn to see him in our neighbors, through Christ our Lord. Amen. I want to end by acknowledging the great effort that has been done by all of you present here to make this Eucharistic celebration colorful and lively as it was. So thank you, the technical team of Kizito and Ken, for making this live transmission on Facebook possible. And I am sure the live stream will be uploaded on our YouTube page immediately after this. A word to all the wives. After this, kindly make arrangement to take your husbands out for a treat. You don't start so much to ask for because they have done that for you in the past. Let them have a good feeling of being fathers. Money may have kept a social distance from you. You can come and borrow from me something little, and then you can repay after COVID-19 is contained. Make your husband feel truly loved. For all those watching us from home, we love you, we miss you, we treasure you. We know the great desire you have to join us here around the table of the Lord, but we pray to God that that will be possible soon. In the meantime, keep doing what is possible, what is necessary. Keep building your family church. Let the fathers at home lead the families in worship, in prayers, and in celebration of the love of God. We wish you a blessed Sunday. I also wish to note that last Sunday, the small Christian community of St. Augustine was the one that was animating, but we erroneously noted that it was St. Francis. We wish to correct that and offer our apologies to the fraternity of St. Augustine, small Christian community. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless and protect you, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Our Mass is ended. Go forth in peace to love and serve the Lord. I wish you a blessed week ahead.